Great. So um, thanks, uh, Heather, for sort of passing over the mic. So I'm here to uh, tell a bit about uh, what happened with the uh, OBF in the Google Summer of Code. So uh, for those of you who don't know about this, Google Summer of Code is a sponsorship program run by Google that uh, started in 2005 and sort of like the informal motto of it is like flip code, not burgers, uh, with the idea of getting students to work on open source software on their summer vacation instead of like getting some job at a fast uh, food joint or something else. Um, it's sponsored over like 13,000 students total in the last many, many years. It runs for three months and it awards roughly $5,000. A couple of years ago, they sort of adjusted the funding depending on like the nation level income. Uh, so it's a bit hard to tell an absolute number here. It depends a bit on where you're from. Um, I've put a, a graph on sort of like the average students per year. So you can see it started kind of slow, but then sort of they're now doing like between 1,200 and 1,300 students every year. OBF has been a participant in Google Summer of Code for quite a while. So we've participated eight times. We applied 10 times, so two times we didn't get in. The bioinformatics topic is rather uh, full. So there's a lot of competition for slots there, and sort of Google is trying to pass the uh, bucket around a bit. Um, but sort of this year we got in again. Um, so I'll just tell a bit about what happened uh, in the projects uh, last year and sort of what's going on this year. So one of the things you might notice if you look at this list is that uh, none of these projects here really are sort of core Biostar projects as sort of like uh, represented by the OBF. And that's because sort of we found that in these projects, usually there's nobody stepping up um, to propose projects and to mentor students because everybody is kind of busy on their sort of real jobs and uh, nobody feels like they have the capacity for it. And so a couple of years back, uh, just to sort of keep the whole thing going, uh, the OBF decided to uh, go and open this up to some more projects that basically are aligned with the OBF overall mission. So other open source projects, ideally some that sort of uh, use OBF uh, supported projects to get their job done. And so that's what we've done since 2016, I think. Um, and uh, so you can see this uh, here as well. So in uh, 2018, uh, we had a couple of people working. So I'm not going to try to pronounce the names because I always hate it when other people butcher my name. And since this is recorded, this will sort of go and stay in eternity. Um, but uh, we had uh, a student work on uh, Open Cobra. Um, which is a molecular modeling, a metabolic modeling uh, software uh, or library framework, and there's a Python version of it, and uh, the student was working on constraint-based modeling there, so uh, supervised by one of my colleagues at the institute uh, who was really, really happy with uh, how the overall project worked. Uh, we had another student work on uh, OpenMS uh, to do something with the peptide search engine results there, so it's like this is a mass spec uh, software suit and uh, they do a lot of things. I don't know. Uh, not too much into that piece of software. Uh, Nextflow is one of the sort of big entries in uh, the workflow uh, system. So we've, there's probably like a couple of millions of those. And I know, Michael, what's your current count of uh, workflow languages? 249. Okay, so Michael says 249 things that he, he knows about. There's probably more. Um, Nextflow is one of the bigger ones, I guess, so it's safe to say uh, they're sort of around a bit more. And there was some work on sub making uh, research object support uh, a first class citizen of the Nextflow framework. So I think that's uh, rather nice to see them adopt these uh, open standards here. Then uh, there were two projects working on BioJS, both on like uh, front end and back end uh, for the BioJS website. Um, We'll see one of these names turn up again in this talk. So uh, like this is actually one of the really, really nice outcomes of uh, Summer of Code. Ideally, you don't just want to like give the students a slot to work on open source software over one summer and earn some money on it. I mean, like that's what happens most of the time. But ideally, you turn these people into sort of longer term contributors to your project. Right? And uh, sort of that's the end goal. I've been involved in every summer of code Google has run over the past uh, many, many years, and I think sort of the success rate for that is rather low, so it's single digits percentages. 
um, but occasionally you get lucky with that. So this year, um, we've sort of scaled down a bit because uh, we just didn't see that many uh, interesting applications, but the ones we ended up selecting, I think, are all uh, very nice. So uh, we have uh, like a buzzword compliant topic here, uh, adding blockchain and hyperledger support to the Journal of Open Data Publications. I think that was sort of like really nice to get the like our buzzwords checked off from the, the bingo chart. Um, there's a, uh, some work on, bio -D, on the BioD project to add variant graph support. Um, I'm mentoring a student myself uh, working on some server infrastructure for the anti-smash project um, that is a bit more experimental, so we don't have any time to commit core employees to that, but it's really, really nice to mentor a student to try with, uh, play with some new web technologies here. There's a, a BAM to Adam converter uh, based on the Sambamba code base uh, that is being worked on. And last but not least, there's another BioJS project this year round, um, adding an automated uh, generator for BioJS components, so making it much, much easier uh, to build BioJS uh, components. Quick outlook uh, to 2020. We are obviously going to uh, apply again to this, um, provided Google is running this again. But sort of, I mean, they, have, they never pre-announced this, but we can pretty much take it as a given that they'll do. And as always, I'll, I'm going to repeat my uh, call here. If you're developing for one of the OBF core projects, I would love to see project proposals from the OBF core projects again. And I know it's a bit of work to mentor these students, but really, um, I would like to see some of these uh, proposals again. I think there's some really fun things that could be tackled in the course of a, a Google Summer of Code. And with that, I'll sort of uh, close up. Um, so two shout outs in particular. So these are all the mentors who are mentoring this year. Uh, specific shout out or like involved um, to Michael, who's been sort of my uh, co-organizer in crime. And another shout out uh, to uh, Satak, who is a returning uh, student, but this time not sort of returning as a student, but returning as a mentor instead. So like he's one of the success stories that we have in, in Summer of Code, um, working as a student last year and now feeling sort of involved in BioJS enough to be, feel confident to actually mentor a student this time around. So I think this is one of the really, really nice stories. And then I have a, like a legally obligatory slide from my employer, but like just ignore that one. Okay, and I guess with that, we are sort of over with the time and I'll just pass to the next person. <laughs>